Hi boys and girls, Mrs. Wagner here, and I have another great story to share with you guys. Okay, as, we, as you know, we've once again been reviewing the skill of cause and effect. Now, just a quick recap, a cause is why something happens, an effect is what actually happened. Okay, now if you remember, I told you cause and effect is part of your everyday life. Pretty much everything you do is cause and effect, whether you realize it or not. Okay, I hope we're doing much better with this skill. And once again, I picked a fantastic story to illustrate the, um, the reading skill of cause and effect. So if you remember, we did Alexander um, one time when we did cause and effect. Last time we did If You Give a Pig a Pancake. And this time I have a book by one of my absolute favorite children's author. And it is called The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein. Okay, if you have not read this book or if you've not heard of Shel Silverstein, I love him just as much as I love Dr. Seuss. Okay, growing up, his books were super important to me. I have almost every single one of his books actually at school. I had to bring this one home so I could share it with you. But if you have not heard of this author or heard of this book, I highly, highly recommend him. His stories are great. He does a lot of poetry. So if you're into that, they're very beautiful stories. Um, he has a lot of silly stories too, so that's how I kind of have the connection with Dr. Seuss, but Shel Silverstein is one of my favorite children's author, and actually I did a whole author study on him for a project when I was in college before I became a teacher. That's how much I love him as an author and his stories. So I really hope you guys enjoy this story, and I hope throughout the story you're able to identify some cause and effect. Now this story does dem demonstrate cause and effect, but there's also a lesson we could learn. Now, when you get a little bit older, you're gonna learn that in school. We call that a moral. A moral is what can we learn from this story? So I know we're not really talking about that right now, but in this story in particular, this story is also gonna demonstrate cause and effect, but it's also going to give you a moral. It's going to teach you something and make you think, hmm, I really might need to change something about myself or in this case, the little boy needs to change something. Okay, so Shel Silverstein, The Giving Tree. Now it's kind of a long story, but you also see as soon as I open the story, there's not many words on each page. Take, um, take very, very, um, pay attention to the illustrations because like I told you guys, the illustrations sometimes are just as powerful as the words. And the illustrations can also tell you a lot more than what the actual story might okay so once there was a tree here's our tree and she loved a little boy and you can't see the boy but you can see his little foot here and every day the boy would come and you can see the boy super excited he's got a huge smile on his face he's got his arm up like he's waving like he's so excited and take a look at the body language of the tree. You see the tree has its branches kind of out just like a mom or a dad or somebody would have their arms raised out when a little child is running to them. So they have a really good relationship. And he would gather her leaves. So here he's playing with her leaves. And make them into crowns and play king of the forest. So he's got a nice little leaf crown and he's playing a game where he's the king he would climb up her trunk. So here's his shoes, you see his little piggies there in his hands. This is the trunk of the tree, he's climbing up it. I'm sure many of you have climbed up the trunk of a tree. And swing from her branches. So again, you can see there's his little piggies, his little feet hanging down, he's playing with her. And eat apples. So again, he's still somewhere up in the tree because his shoes are down here, but look, you can see he's throwing the apple cores down. So he's enjoying a nice snack from her. And they would play hide and go seek. So here he is behind the rock and you can kind of see her branch, kind of like an arm, seeking him. And when he was tired, he would sleep in her shade. So here he is, all the games they played, kind of resting on her, taking a nap. There they are, nice little hug. And the boy loved the tree very much. So take a look. He's so happy. He carved a heart in the tree that says me plus T for tree. And the tree was happy. Okay, take a look at this next page, the illustrations. What happened to the boy? 
You can see the boy grew up quite a bit. But time went by. And the boy grew older. Take a look at this illustration. Not only do I see the boy's legs, but I see somebody else's legs, and I also see a different heart with different initials. So maybe the boy's in love with somebody, and he's bringing that somebody special to the tree now. So the tree's not as important. And now look at the tree. The branch is kind of like this, like, what's going on? And the tree was often alone. Now look at him. Then one day, the boy came to the tree and the tree said, come boy, come and climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and eat apples and lay in my shade and be happy. I'm too big to climb and play, said the boy. I want to buy things and have fun. I want some money. Can you give me some money? I'm sorry, said the tree, but I have no money. I have only leaves and apples. Take my apples, boy, and sell them in the city. Then you will have money, and then you will be happy. So the tree's doing everything she can to make that boy happy. So she said, I can't give you money, but I could give you apples that you could sell to make money. And look, there he is up the tree taking all of her apples. And so the boy climbed up the tree and gathered her apples and carried them away. And the tree was happy. So she was alone and then all of a sudden the boy came back because he wanted something and now that he's there she feels happy again. Now look at the boy. He's much older. He's a man now. But the boy stayed away for a very long time and the tree was sad. And then one day the boy came back and the tree shook with joy and said, Come, boy, come climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and be happy. I'm too busy to climb trees, said the boy. I want a house to keep me warm, he said. I want a wife, and I want children, and so I need a house. Can you give me a house? I have no houses, said the tree. The forest is my house, and you, but you may cut off my branches and build a house, and then you will be happy. So at first she gave him the trees because, or the apples because he wanted to make money. Now he wants a house. She said, I can't give you a house, but you could cut my branches and make a house. Do you guys think he's going to do it? I think so too. He seems kind of selfish and greedy. And he did it. And so the boy cut off her branches and carried them away to build the house. And the tree was happy. I wonder why the tree's happy, even though he just takes her apples, now he takes her branches. Hmm. Now look at him, he's super old. But the boy stayed away for a very long time. And when he came back, the tree was so happy, she could hardly speak. Come boy, she whispered, come and play. I'm too old and sad to play, said the boy. I want a boat that will take me far away from here. Can you give me a boat? Cut down my trunk and make a boat, said the tree. Then you could sail away and be happy. So he took her apples, he took her branches. Now she's saying, cut me down so you can make a boat. Do you guys think he's going to cut her down? Let's see. And so the boy cut down her trunk and made a boat and sailed away. And look, you can see in this illustration, all that's left is that first heart the boy made that said me plus T for tree. And the tree was happy. But not really. Of course she's not happy. She, she's not even a tree anymore. He took everything from her just to make him happy. Okay, now he's like super, super old. Here he is. And after a long time, the boy came back. I'm sorry, boy, said the tree, but I have nothing left to give you. My apples are gone. Ah, my teeth are too weak for apples, said the boy. My branches are gone, said the tree. 
You cannot swing on them. I'm too old to swing on branches, said the boy. My trunk is gone, said the tree. You cannot climb. I'm too tired to climb, said the boy. I'm sorry, sighed the tree. I wish that I could give you something, but I have nothing left. I am just an old stump. I'm sorry. So every time the boy came back, he just wanted something from the tree and she gave it to him because it made him happy. And in turn, it made her happy. But he took everything from her and she's like, I'm sorry, I wanna make you happy, but I have nothing else left to give you. I don't need very much now, said the boy. Just a quiet place to sit and rest. I'm very tired. Well, said the tree, straightening herself up as much as she could. Well, an old stump is a good for sitting and resting. Come, boy, come sit down. Come sit and rest. And the boy did. And the tree was happy. The end. Okay, so such a beautiful story. Um, lots of cause and effect in that story. I hope you were able to pick that out. Also, even though we're not talking about morals now, I hope you were able to pick out a moral or figure out what can you learn from reading this story. Think, this story is called The Giving Tree. All this tree did was give, 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 give to this little boy, and all this boy did was take, 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 take. And, I mean, we know how that works in real life. People don't really like when you just take from them without giving back in return, okay? So beautiful story. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Again, this is The Giving Tree by Shel Silverstein. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you look more into his books. And most importantly, I hope you were able to pick out some cause and effect for your activity that follows. Okay, bye guys. I'll see you next week for another great story.